I'll start a little bit, tell you a little bit of story here. Uh, in 1972, when I got out of the Marines, uh, I got out in uh, June of 72. Well, a couple months later, my dad and I were out hunting for birds, and, and we decided to go hunting off the reservation in the Berger Plains area, which is natural, national forest land. And uh, we knew some areas where there'd be some good possibilities for partridge and such, but also some possibilities for deer. And we were looking for food for our family. And so uh, with our shotguns and, and our bird shot, we put some buck shot and some uh, shotgun slugs in our pockets and we we're going to go out hunting. Well, we were out in the woods there and a gentleman from the Michigan DNR came up to us and asked us what we were doing and what do you think we're doing here? And so uh, during the course of the discussion, he uh, set a date for us also and uh, he confiscated what birds we'd gotten. Uh, he confiscated our rifles, our ammunition issued us citations and then sent us on our way. Well, the first place we went to was to see our tribal chairman. We began talking to him, you know, we have this right, we told him, we're, you know, according to the treaties and everything that, that our, my grandfather and my great-grandfather told us, the treaty said we could go off the reservation. And so our tribal chairman contacted the tribal attorney and tribal attorney said, well, don't worry about it, I'll see what I can do. And about an hour later, he called us up and said, you can come get your rifles and your birds, and, and they're dropping charges. Well, this was at a time when the state DNRs didn't want to get it into court. So there was a lot of times they were looking the other way. And, and as time went on, you know, in 1978, I became a uh, tribally licensed commercial fisherman. I used to have to go out and set my nets at sunset and raise them at sunrise. They weren't allowed to be out there during the day, and this was on Kiwana Bay. And I remember my uh, elder in the community who would spend 50 years fishing, and as what was stated before, he was a night fisherman. He would go out and set his nets after dark and raise them before light. And that was the only way he could get food for his family. In 1978, I also got on the Tribal Council, and we began to discuss different things. We would had conservation regulations for the reservation and included Kiwana Bay, which the reservation cuts right across, so we considered that our waters. And it was interesting to note that we began talking about resource management, and we'd actually passed a regulation closing off Kiwana Bay to all fishermen during the spawning season. Figured, well, you know, the tribe should be concerned about that, but the sportsmen should too. Well, it was interesting to note that the tribal council and each individual tribal member were presented with a lawsuit a month later from the local sportsmen's club, who, uh, I don't know whether they were interested in protecting the resources or, or what, but they didn't think it was right for us to tell them that they couldn't fish in Keweenaw Bay, despite the fact we were trying to do it to protect the resources. I remember in 1983, when I was chairman of Kiwana Bay, the Supreme Court had just uh, turned down hearing the case out of Lakutare. And I, have, I received a telephone call from Frank Polka. And he was the, I'm not sure what the proper title was, but he was like the, uh, the director of the DNR for uh, Michigan. He said, Jim, uh, you know this decision just came out of Seventh Circuit Court. I said, yeah, I heard about it. I said, uh, well, you know, that doesn't really pertain to us because we're in the Second Circuit. I said, yeah, what about it? And he says, uh, well, you know, we're not really interested or capable right now to, to, to battle the tribe in court. We just spent millions of dollars over in the 1836 area, Bucko's area there. He says, uh, you know, we'd like to know what you're going to do about this. I says, well, let me talk to my counsel and we'll look at the we'll look at the treaty, we'll look at the, the decisions, and we'll get back to you. Well, uh, we did get back to him two two years later. I went to our tribal council. And we began discussing this, and we decided to develop a conservation committee. And the purpose of the conservation committee was to develop regulations for hunting, fishing, and gathering off the reservation within the ceded territory for our members. We brought in John Gilbert from Glyphwick. We brought in our, our own tribal attorney, 
and no offense to attorneys, but Keweenaw Bay Indian Community Tribal Council, back then and for a number of years afterwards, and I, I don't know if they still do, had a philosophy about attorneys. Tribal attorneys were good to tell us the things that we couldn't do and shouldn't do, but they were there to protect us when we told them we were going to do it anyway, and which we did quite a bit.